As I roved out one summer's morn, I saw a scarecrow tied to a pole in a field of corn. His coat was black and his head was bare. And as the wind shook him, the crows took into the air. Yes, I can relate to that. I do look like a scarecrow uh, these days. I don't take any um, um, pride in my appearance. Isn't isn't that a, one of the seven deadly sins anyway? Pride. Fuck pride. That's pride. Fucking with you. Is he? as you probably heard from Pulp Fiction. Well, there you go, that's all I need. <clears throat> it's a sin and Marcellus Wallace telling me that that's pride fucking with me. So I don't need that. Anyway, it is the season for Scarecrows. Um, and the you, you probably don't think they're, you know, used anymore. They've got bird scarers, you know, with the Things that make it like a, a gas gun that makes a gunshot sound every few minutes or every few fucking seconds sometimes if uh, you happen to be sleeping, trying to sleep next to one, which I, I'm not, but I have done in the past when I was stayed somewhere, you know, in Lincolnshire, I think it was. A lot of uh, corn and stuff grown down there, but there's n hardly anything around here, just, just very local to where I am. It's all pasture and meadow and moor and and mixed farming very few intensive anyway uh, and it gives you a kind of um, fairy tale view of farming actually which isn't a good thing because little fluffy animals uh, but they're going to be eaten you know and uh, that's, I don't think that's good I don't think it's good to uh, chow down on a sentient being. In fact, uh, when I was married, we had a dog that uh, was a chow, a chow chow, which um, they're actually bred for their meat in, you know, the country. And I couldn't, uh, well, you know, why couldn't you eat, uh, eat a dog if you eat a pig? Because they're very intelligent animals, both of them. I've never seen them finish the, the uh, crossword, but you know what I'm talking about. They're very aware, they're very um, smart, as in the opposite to what I look like. <laughs> so, um, it is the um, 5th of July, and, uh, and uh, when I hear that, I think of the American independence celebrations. Um, was it, I don't know whether that was the day that they supposedly beat off the British, or the day that they um, declared themselves to be independent. I, I don't know, because I, history doesn't interest me now. But uh, I hope you're having a good one, Bill, and thank you very much. And um, if you ever need anywhere to stay, you know where to to um, just get a word out to me if you come over here. And it is also today a year since I um, moved into this shed, would you believe? So I've, I've seen all the um what nature can throw at me well <laughs> not not really but i have seen a few um uh inches of snow and the blazing hot sun for days now for days in fact it's just sort of um clouded over a little which is a real relief for me um in fact this morning uh it was the first morning i I just uh, couldn't face going out anymore. I think I had too much sun yesterday. I didn't put my straw hat on um, and I just forgot it and just carried on. 
And that's very silly. Very silly indeed. So about three years ago, I bought a new spade. And it was a bulldog. Uh, it's a makeup spade. They made spades. Made, been making spades for years, um, decades, many decades. And it looks like this. I told you I was boring. It's got a what you call a D handle, and it's a good spade. It's a good quality. I do give it some um, hammer, as as it were. And uh, oops, excuse me. Yeah, and it hasn't let me down. I haven't broken the shaft. And in 1996, which uh, is now what 22 years ago. I bought a spade, now I've, I have put a new shaft on it, um, but it was a T-handle, and it wasn't a kind of a make I'd known, it was a called Defiance. But I was just starting this new job, um, so I had to buy a spade because I, um, I'd left mine somewhere uh, about 600 miles away. So I had to buy a new one, and I bought this one. Now, I have worn that down, and I'll just show you this one to compare. Now, I'm not saying, you know, oh, what a hero, because uh, I am, because I've worn this down. Not at all. But a spade that's worn like that is a very useful tool. I didn't use it for the vast majority of the uh, excavations I've been doing. I used the bulldog because um, it needs breaking in. <laughs> but I did cut the turf off with a short, um, with a sharp, short spade because a short bladed spade because um, it cuts through the the grass, the turfs much easier you know the grass roots are pretty um strong now that is what i'd like to see the grass roots being strong and rise not rising up but simply knowing knowing having knowledge and knowing that we've been lied to all our lives and the only way I think that it's going to change um, and I want to see this in my lifetime and I am 52 and I don't consider myself um, well I know that I am I'm, my genes aren't um, going to um, project me into my 90s I'll be lucky if I make my 70s I just know that so I um, I know that time is running out, at least for me. Now I'm not sad about that because um, I'm certainly not scared of dying. I don't think it's the end. I don't know, but I don't think it is. And if it is, well, you know, the rest will be amazing. I'll finally get to sleep, which will be um, great. Just the thing is, I won't be dreaming. And I've had some really nice dreams just recently. Strange, but you know, not not nightmares or just pleasant. So it's the grassroots, the people like me, ordinary working people, who need to know that we're not living on a spinning ball. I think what we have on our side is science, real science. Now that cannot be argued with. And any type of science should welcome a challenge, should be open to be challenged. And if it's not, you know there's something amiss. So when you um, 
say to somebody, have you ever thought of this or have you ever thought of that? You know, flat earth related. And I've said that word again, but uh, well, those two words. But you know what I mean. Um, the normal response from, let's say, a stranger is either um, they either laugh at you and think you're a little bit weird, or they um, might get a bit upset with you and say, don't be so fucking stupid, or something like that. But um, we're all um, responsible for this. We're all responsible for letting this happen. We have to um, know our own minds and be confident that um, science, the scientific method, is the way to go. Now, if you can demonstrate water bending, curving over a ball, then um, okay, but I've never seen it, never ever witnessed it, and so therefore it can't be. And if you can demonstrate a vacuum next to a pressure, an air pressure, if you can demonstrate with that with no barrier, if you can demonstrate that to me, then okay. But when we um, say that um, these things cannot exist in the real world, you can't have water that um, conforms to the exterior of a shape, one of Dell's best lines. Um, you, ju you just, um, you either get, like I say, you either get abuse or and ridicule or smiles and <laughs> and um, you, you patronise or you're, um, what's the word? Um, you're kind of treated like an infant, maybe, or um, they'll say something to humour you. Yes, like, do you want an ice cream? This is serious, people. It's it's massive, and it's 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 the most serious thing that you'd ever come across in your whole life. We all we've all had personal tragedies, I'm sure. You know, death of parent, um, or you know, whatever. And this outweighs that. No matter how you look at it, this concerns everyone. And it's the deception that's that's maintained by the universities, the places of learning, the places where you would go for the truth, are actually places where you just get brainwashed instead. And that is the place where you can't take this argument, apparently. You cannot, um, no one will offer themselves up to be challenged. Not only is, should science welcome the challenge, um, there are no, there are no um, offers of um, discussion on this subject from the universities. Now, um, if you have loved ones in uh, education, um, I know it's not easy, um, and I don't think it's even legal to, to take them out of education in some countries, but you can in Britain. And um, I'd strongly advise that you you either don't send your children there, or you, you get them out. Or you, you homeschool them when they get home and just say, just forget about all that is bollocks. 
which is kind of an easy way. Anyway, my time's up. See ya.